we have is by your mercy. We give you glory this morning. For the rest of the time before us, we ask that you come to have your way. And at the end, let your name alone be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm happy to be here. I have a presentation. Uh, unfortunately, we are having challenges with the projector. But I promise that uh, uh, those of you on the chapel WhatsApp group, the presentation will be sent to you after this service. Amen? Amen. So that you can, uh, you, can, you can see the things. But for now, if you, if you want to write, you write. If you want to listen, you listen. Uh, I'm speaking this morning on biblical principles for financing kingdom service. Amen. Biblical principles of financing kingdom service. And somehow, somehow, uh, you know, whenever you talk about money in church, it gets some people very, very uncomfortable. And I remember one of our student uh, fellowship, student fellowship uh, leaders, one day he was appealing for fund in those days. And he said, on the day you were born, your parents needed money to, do, to run around. On the day you die, people will need money to run around. Amen. So money is very important in the world and in the church. Praise the Lord. Um, and for this church, I know that every member of this church has been making one form of sacrifice or the other. And I speak this morning... I speak as a Nigerian, and I know that there are many Nigerians in this congregation. With the, our current economic crisis, coupled with the fact that we need to keep God's work going, I know that many of us will be concerned. Amen. Now, the first slide I have is, what can you give to God that it was not God that gave to you first? Amen. What can you give to God that it was not God that gave to you first? And I have a picture on this slide. You know, a picture of a young child. You know, normally when you give children popcorn, okay, ah, it's gone off. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't bother, just let's manage it. We'll send it to their WhatsApp group. When you give small children popcorn or manpower, and you ask the, ch the child, Give me small out of the map I gave to you. What do the children normally do? What do they do? They hide the popcorn behind them. Meanwhile, you are the one that gave them all. Give me the map that I gave you small, they will hide it behind. And for many of us, that is our attitude. What can you give God that it was not God that gave you fresh? Amen. So for those of you that are writing, Whatever I say here, don't say it because somebody said it from the pupit. I like, uh, please go back to this slide. I like, if you go to Acts 17, Acts of the Apostles 17. Acts of Apostles 17. Amen. Please, let me have the presentation. Good, verse 11. Acts of Apostles chapter 17. Verse 11. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? All right, let's read together. You, you, you cannot, I'll read it for you. They were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Amen. And my challenge for you today, whatever I say, don't believe it because somebody said it from here. Go and search the scriptures. The brethren in Berea, the Bible called them, they were more honorable. Why? They listened to what the apostle, the man of God was saying. But they didn't just take it like that. The Bible said they went back home and searched the scriptures to see whether what this man of God is saying is what is in the scripture. So that's the challenge I give to you this morning. Amen. 
Search the scripture because we are talking about money. And when it comes to money, many people have their ideas and many people have their philosophies. But let's look at what the word of God is saying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Having said that, God's work must be done by God's people. Especially the fact that we have a building project coming up. And I have something to say about that building project as we talk. Amen. The next slide. And this right, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Those of you that are writing, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Are you there? Are you there, church? Are you there, church? I'll read from here. Every man according as he has proposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. And that is the key verse of my presentation this morning. Every man according as he has proposed in his heart. Every woman according as he has proposed in his heart. It's not by compulsion. It's not by arm twisting. It's not by bringing a very eloquent preacher to stir the people's emotion so that they can make promises to God. No, every man as he has proposed in his heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please keep and... If you read down 2 Corinthians 9, you will see, even though you have the liberty to give what you have proposed in your heart, remember that the Bible also says, those that sow it sparingly will do what? And those that sow it bountifully will do what? So as you are deciding to make up your mind, amen. I remember it was in chapel one day, I think I was here, and I don't know whether it was a Thanksgiving offering that we are having in this chapel. I, I, I had made up my mind that as I am going to church, this is what I am packaging. I made up my mind. I kept the money in an envelope. And my mind, and normally, when I make up my mind from home, if you like, go and bring somebody to turn people around. It's what I made up my mind that I will give. But on this day, I sat right here, and when I heard the man of God, when I saw the need that the church wanted to meet, I changed my mind. Amen. I changed my mind, because actually, I have made up my mind thinking that I understood the challenge that the church wanted to make. But when I came and I saw the depth, I made my mind. I gave what I had, but I made an additional promise. So brothers and sisters, you are at liberty to make up your mind what you want to give. It's not by compulsion. I know in some churches when they want to do building projects, they say, you, you're a professor, you will donate this. You, you're a lecturer one, you will donate this. You, you're a student, you will donate this. No. Everybody must make up his mind what to give. But while you are making up your mind, you must always remember that he that so sparingly we read sparingly. Next slide, sir. Next slide. So I'm going to talk about six principles of financing the kingdom of God. Six. Six principles. There may be more, but I was in, at, I think I already spent ten minutes. <laughs> For the time that we have, there will be more, but I'll, don't, I'll talk about six principles. Number one, grant support for big projects. Grant support for big projects. And if you are writing, write it. We will send the, the, the presentation to Grant support for big projects. Big project example, building the church like we are building. Number two, regular proportional grace giving. That's a regular offering. Regular proportional grace giving. Number three, Church or team giving. Church or team. Team as in football team. Number four, tent making. Number four, tent making. Tent. Number four, tent making. Number five, sharing with the local churches. 
sharing with the local churches. And number six, alms giving. Alms, giving of alms. Amen. So how many things will I talk about? How many? How many? Talk to me, church. Six. Number one. Let's go to number one. Now, if you read Exodus chapter 25, verse 1 to 8. Exodus 25, 1 to 8. Are we there? Exodus 25, 1 to 8. I'll read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering of every man, that for every man that giveth it willingly with his what? Heart. Are you looking at your scriptures at all? Every man that giveth what? Willingly with his heart. Ye shall take me an offering. Next. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them. Gold and silver and brass. Read on. And blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and on and on. If you go home, you can read up to verse 8. Amen. Go back to my presentation. When you go home, you read it. Another scripture, we will not read it here because of time. You read 1 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 14 to 19. Remember, I commended the brethren in Berea. When you go home, search the scriptures to see whether what this man is saying is so. Praise the Lord. And then you read 1 Chronicles 22, 14 to 19. Haggai chapter 1, verse 3 to 8. But this one, I will make mention of them while we are here. Amen. How many of you remember Nehemiah? If you remember Nehemiah, please can you raise your hand? Nehemiah in the Bible. What did he do? What did Nehemiah do? Eh? I'm not hearing you. What did Nehemiah do? Who provided the money? Who provided the money that Nehemiah used? The people. God's people, the people. What Nehemiah got was he had permission from the king. And let me remind you that the king was, was not a Jew. The king that gave Nehemiah the express permission and wrote him an introductory letter. As Nehemiah is going, give him access to the timbers in the wood. Give him access to this. Was not a Jew. But the Jews supported the rebuilding of the world. Amen. Back Remember uh, Haggai. Please let, stay on my presentation. Ezra. You remember Ezra? How many of you remember Ezra? Let me see your hands. What did Ezra do? Hello? What did Ezra do? What did he do? Eh? Ezra rebuilt the what? Who gave the command and provided the resources? The king. And the king, at this time, the, the Jews were on exile. At this time, the Jews were on exile. It was a king that stood up one day and said he had a burden in his heart to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And it was that same king that said, who among the displaced Jews will take the responsibility to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple? So the man provided the resources to rebuild the temple at Jerusalem. Amen. What am I saying? This chapel building we are building, we must reach men in authority that will take responsibility for it. It's too big a project to saddle the responsibility to members of the church alone. Am I talking to somebody? Uh, anyway, praise the Lord. I have said, whatever I say here, go and check it out. Go and check it out. Amen. So we must reach the vice chancellor. We must reach the governor. Whoever we know that this man is a Christian. We must reach them to provide the grant support to build this church. It's too big a project to settle on only members of this assembly. Amen. 
If you agree with me, encourage me by saying amen. amen. Oh, that means you agree, isn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We must go to them because I remember when you want to do launching, no matter the logistics you do, some people will not come. So I want to suggest my first recommendation. This assembly must constitute a very high-powered delegation. High-powered delegation to reach this man and tell them that this is the need. This is the need for the church on campus. This is the need. We need your support. And those men, by the grace of God, we ask God to persuade their heart to see the need. Like, they, like God persuaded the hearts of these unbelieving nation kings. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Solomon built the temple. Who gave him the money? David. David. Everybody say David. David. You know it was David that actually wanted to build the temple. God told him that, mm -mm 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 -mm, David, your hand, you have, you, you, you have done so many things. Leave this matter. Your son will do it. When David was going, he left the resources with Solomon. Amen. 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 Do you remember the centurion whom Jesus sealed the servant? You remember him? Amen. What was one of the qualifications that the Jews said he had? Amen. He built us a temple. Was he a Jew? He was a Roman. He built a temple. You must reach this kind of people. And if God leads you to a man that have a heart for God's people, that can provide the fund, praise the Lord. And of course, that will not exonerate this university. The university have a responsibility to build. You know, these days, our constitution, we have separated the church and the state. So it's difficult for vice chancellors to, 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 to budget money for church building. It's difficult. It's not easy. You know, so when you, when you are not there, you think that, ah, this man is a vice chancellor. He should just give 10 million for this church. How, under which subhead? <laughs> Amen. You know, I was telling my colleague here that my, 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 my brother and his wife are having problem, and the matter is going to court. So my, my brother sent me for money to, so that he can pay lawyers. I said, under which subhead will I put that money? <laughs> From the beginning, I told you how to resolve this problem. You didn't listen to me. The matter is going to court. You want me to give you money? Under which subhead? Will I put the money? So anytime you think that the vice chancellor will just take up one day and say, I give this church 20 million, where is, where is he going to put the money? When the auditors come, they will, they will challenge him for that. But I'm not saying we must exonerate the vice chancellor. He has a stake because this, universe, this church is part of the university. And students come here. Amen. So he has a stake. I'm not exonerating him, but he cannot take it all. And most of the times, it's Christian, Christian communities that have this restriction. The Muslims don't have the restriction like that. Next slide, quickly, next slide. I, I don't, my time is going. Amen. So I know we have tried launching. This way, the place where we are now, we tried to do some launching. And we know on that day I was there, many of the people we invited that promised to be there, they didn't come. Amen. So, in case we want to do a launching, who do we invite? And how do we go about it? So, our answer for this building project is the human capital that is available to God's people. Do you know what human capital is? You see, Nigeria is a rich nation. You know, you, you hear it. It's a rich nation. And you, our population is a blessing. I don't know if you know our population is not a cause. It should be a blessing. Praise the Lord. Now, when you get the slide, I wrote something under the, the KFI model. The KFI model, Nasrallah State University. You know, in those kind of community, normally the Christians are more united. Hello? The Christians in Muslim dominated communities are more united than us. If you agree, just encourage me by waving your hand. Let me see. So you agree with me. Amen. I've not said anything here that you have not agreed. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, in Nasrallah State University, 
Before they realized what was happening, the mosque was up. And the believers rallied around. And the vice chancellor told them that they should go and find out from the, from the Muslims how they built their church. It was not university money, though university contributed some. So the believers rallied around and said, ah, this is a challenge to us. What did they do? Again, they constituted a very high power delegation. They visited every Christian that was on the payroll of Nazareth State University. And they told them, you don't have to be a church member. You don't have to come to this church. All we want is, out of your salary, how much can you dedicate to this church building every month? And any time you are tired of the deduction and you want to pull out, you have liberty to pull out. So all the Christians in Nazareth State University, they made pledges. The chapel wrote their name, wrote their account number, and wrote a forwarding letter to the vice chancellor through the boss, uh, through the bossa, that these staff have pledged to commit so 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 percent of their salary every month to the completion of the chapel building. Amen. Amen. And as I speak to you, even though their chapel building is completed, the deduction is still going on. Are you hearing what I'm saying, brother sir? We must do that, too. <laughs> we must do that. Because, listen, there are lecturers in this university that are born again, but they don't know what is happening here. They will not go to hell. They will go to heaven, but they are not aware of what is happening here. Sometimes when you invite them to church, they say, where is the church? They've been here for 10 years, 20 years. We must find a way to reach them. And if, if, if 50 professors in this university will say, okay, Take 15,000 naira every month. 15,000 naira. Some of us will spend money on data on, on each month more than 15. I'll sacrifice this 15,000 naira, 50 professors every month times one year. How much? Uh, how many of you have credit in mathematics? I say, how much? By now, you should be telling me the, the, the figure. Eh? How many? Nine or ten? Nine million. Every year. Twelve months. How many million? Every month. Eh? Seven fifty every month. So so in one year we have how much? Ten million. Just imagine we had ten we have nine million this year. Imagine how this work will move forward. Brother, sir, there are people ready to give. There are people ready to give. But if you don't involve them, you know, you know this thing on Facebook, if they don't call you, don't go. That's the policy of many people. If they don't call you, don't go. And I have that policy. If you are in trouble, you don't call me. I will not come and pocknose my mouth. So I think I've made that recommendation. Let's do it. Even in this church, let's do it. Let's say, okay, we are, we are not inviting unbelievers. I will talk about that later. Next slide, quickly. Next slide. Next slide. So don't forget the KFI model. The second one is grace giving. That's the Sunday, Sunday offering that we take here. Can that money build this church? No. That's Sunday, Sunday offering. In short, Sunday, Sunday offering, if you read the scriptures, it's not for big projects like this. Amen. 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 So read scripture, 1 Corinthians 9, 11 to 15. 1 Corinthians 9, 11 to 15. We will not read all. I will read part of it. You complete it at home. 11. If we have sown unto, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap from you carnal things? Next, next verse. Next verse. Now, this passage is talking about, see, in most churches, the Sunday, Sunday offering we give, in most of the time, goes for the upkeep of the pastor. Hello? Hello? The upkeep of who? 
The upkeep of who? The upkeep of who? And the Bible says, if, if the, when you get the slide, I put a, I put a picture of, a, of an ox that was muzzled in that slide. The Bible says, thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he does what? Thread the corn. You know, so many people have problem with putting pastors on payroll. The pastor that feeds you with the word of God, the pastor that you call when you have problem, if your wife is in labor at midnight, you say, pastor, wake up, pray for me. That same pastor that say, pay his salary, you have problem with it. Hello? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? You are blessed when you have a pastor that does not depend on the, on the offering. And that is why I believe what is happening in most churches. Most of the churches cannot sustain their pastors. So I don't blame the pastors that used to work, manipulate, and do all sorts of things to get money from the congregation, even though I don't subscribe to that. But if people willingly support the man of God that is feeding you spiritually, amen. So when you go home, read those scriptures. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You are not saying amen well again. Amen. If you go home, read Luke chapter 10, verse 7 to 1. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. And the key verse here is the principle of a laborer is worthy of his word. A laborer is worthy of his word. Yes. It's great giving. Amen. 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 The, 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 the Levites in the Old Testament, they were entitled to the tithe that the people bring in. If you go, you can read Numbers chapter 18, verse 21 to 24. Praise the Lord. The elders in the New Testament church must be supported by the congregation. The elders must be supported by the congregation. Next slide, quickly. Now, if you read, uh, this one is support. How does God want his missionaries to be supported? That's number three. I will jump the rest because of my time. But how does God want missionaries to be supported? The way missionaries are to be supported is different from the way the pastor is to be supported. Because a missionary cannot go and depend on the offering of Gentile nations. Hello? Hello? We send you missionary to South Sudan. We don't expect that you go and begin to manipulate those congregations for money. You must, the church must have a system to support those kind of people. Amen. If you read, read, read uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 to 19. Please don't check, the, don't remove the, the slides again. They would write the notes and read it at home. Read, but we are going to read this one. First, uh, third John chapter 1, verse 5 to 8. We'll read it. And I would like somebody to read it from the congregation. Please put the slide back. Third John 1, 5 to 8. Have you seen it? Uh, yes. 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 Whom if thou bring forward on their journey, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward, on their journey after a godly sort, yes. thou shalt do well. Amen. Because that, for his name's sake, for his name's sake, they went forth. They went forth. Taking nothing. Taking nothing. Of the Gentiles. Of the Gentiles. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't subscribe to missionaries we send out. Anyway, if, if people have converted, you don't deny them the opportunity to give, to support the work. But missionaries that we send out must be supported. Because these brethren, they have, they have gone forth not taking anything from the Gentiles. And you know, the apostle Paul practiced the same principle. There are some churches, 
that he planted, he was not touching their offering. Am I, am I speaking the truth? Uh, if, if you're not speaking the truth, please encourage me by showing your hand again. Hallelujah. Amen. There were churches that the apostle Paul were not take, was not taking offering from. And he wrote it in his book. He said, I got, you know, when I was in need, the brethren from Philippi pre- provided my need. I didn't take offering from you. Even though I had the right to pick, I didn't take. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we must support missionaries. The church is our responsibility. And I know that this church, we are trying, but we can do more. You know, when you have a building project like this, if you are not careful, you you will deny yourself of that blessing. Amen. This is the last of the six we'll take so that we can move ahead. Next slide. Everybody say tent making. Again. Again. Tent making. By the qualification of the apostle that we know, we know that he's a learned man, isn't it? Are there lawyers in the house? The apostle was a lawyer, trained lawyer. In addition to being trained lawyer, thank God the university is teaching vocational education. Amen. In addition to his trade, oh, you are a lawyer. Do you know how to make tent? <laughs> Hallelujah. Acts, Acts chapter 18. We'll read it. And I want somebody to read again. Acts 18, 1 to 3. Acts 18, 1 to 3. After these things, yes. Paul departed from Athens mm-hmm. and came to Corinth. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Okay. Because that Claudius had commanded up to part from Rome yes. and came unto them. Yes. And because he was of the same craft, mm. he abode with them. Yes. And wrath. Mm. For by their occupation they were tent makers. Amen. Thank and you. That's all. So Paul was living with this family and the family made a living by tent making and Paul had that skill so Paul joined them later on in 1st Thessalonians in 2nd Thessalonians chapter 3 Paul wrote you know that I did not collect money from any one of you to meet my needs how many of you remember that scripture he said, with my hands, with my hands, what was he doing? He was making tents for business, as busy as the apostle is. You know, so when people read this, they say, no, all pastors must make tents. No, there are situations. If the support coming from the congregation is unable to sustain the pastor, the pastor, I recommend tent making. Hello? Hello? Because we have so many able-bodied young men these days. Their idea of full-time ministry is that once you are in full-time ministry, you, know, you should not work. That is an error. It's an error. I agree that sometimes if you are in full-time ministry, the church should support you. Brethren should gather to support you. But if the support cannot sustain you, brothers and sisters, pastors' children need to go to school. True or false? Pastor's wife and the pastor, they have maybe they have two cars, they need to buy fuel, true or false. So if the if the church where you are pastoring is unable to support all these needs, and the pastor of his wife has a skill, they should apply this principle. Hallelujah. It's not a principle that is recommended for everybody. Praise the Lord. If you have good support, and the support coming from the congregation is good. You do what the apostles did. They say, men and brethren, choose people that will be in charge of sharing food so that we can commit ourselves to prayer and the word of God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. The next two slides, I will not make emphasis. Is a... Amen. In times of crisis, in times of crisis, the church should not just fold their hands. Praise the Lord. And I know that this church, we are doing well in that area, but we need to improve. Amen. Amen. We have visited the refugee camp many times. 
I know that many churches in Nigeria made donations to government during COVID. Did you hear that? During COVID, churches made donations to government. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that's another way. And the last one is arms giving. But in all of this is by love, arms giving. Praise the Lord. You see, arms giving can attract the grace of God upon your life. Hello? Hello? How much time do I have left? Is it, do I have 15 minutes left? All right, 15 minutes. So I'll finish in 15 minutes. If you are here and you agree with me that arms giving can attract the grace of God to your life, show me your hand. Let me see. <laughs> Acts chapter 9, write it. We are not reading it. Please keep the slide. Let me round up before they bring me paper. <laughs> Acts chapter 9, verse 36. When you go home, read it. There's a woman there called Dockers. Everybody say Dockers. What was one of the qualifications that Dockers had that the people cried unto Peter? What? Giving. She gave to widows. When she died, Peter was in the vicinity. They sent to Peter and said, no, 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 no. No, it's too early. This woman cares for widows. And Peter came and rose her, raised her up. Acts chapter 10, verse 2 to 4. Everybody say Cornelius. Cornelius. Everybody say Cornelius. 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But when you read the place, you will see. One day, he had a vision. And it looks as if God was saying, No, Cornelius, you are too precious to go to hell. Your, your, your arms giving has earned my attention. Your arms giving has earned my attention. Even though you don't belong to the Jewish family, send to Peter, let Peter come and tell you how to be, how to be saved. What made Colinius qualified for that? Arms giving. So brothers and sisters, we live in a tight nation, but don't shut your heart when you see people in need. And I want everybody to say that after me. One, two, go. Say, say, don't shut your heart. Go. When you see people in need. Amen. In short, the Bible says of Abraham, the Bible says, some have unknowingly entertained angels. Amen. Next slide. I'm rounding up now. Now, I'm going to list five, five things that people do these days that you will not find in the New Testament. Five things that people do these days that you will not find in the New Testament. One, instilling fear into the hearts of people so that they can give. It's not in the New Testament. All these things that if you don't give to God, you will go to hell. Show me the scripture. You don't give to God, so you go to hell. You won't find it in the New Testament. And brothers and sisters, I commended the brethren in Berea. Search the scriptures. Giving to God is not by force. It's not by arm twisting. You know, some the kind of aka. What do they call those that aka what? Aka gum. Aka gum. When the members of your congregation have an aka gum, you look for a way to twist. Twist, twist their hand, twist their hand. And the thing that, peop the thing that make people fear in church most is hell. So you say, well, the pastor is suffering, you are sitting down, you will go to hell. And there are many Christians that give to avoid hell. Listen, if, you, if the reason for your giving to God is to avoid hell, then you are not born again. I know it's controversial, but search the scriptures. It's not what this man say or what that man say. What does the word of God say? Let me repeat myself. If the reason for your giving to God is to avoid hell, it shows you are not born again. Because by the reason of giving shall no man have eternal life. Amen. 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 The amen is beginning to come down. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now there's, there's another one that's all selling the gospel. Uh, you invited the wrong person. 
to preach this message, you invited the wrong person. If you really want somebody that will touch these people to give money, go and look for somebody that knows how to, they say, ah, brethren, I was like this, I was like that. But when I started giving, see my shoe, my shoe now is 2.5 million. If you want God to give you this kind of shoe, stand up and give the Lord an offering. In this country, so if I give the Lord an offering, God will give me money to buy a shoe of two point five million. Who will be sitting there that will not come and give an offering? Is that and, and, and this thing? You are laughing. That is what Nigerians want. Nigerians want people that we people that we make merchandise of their faith. People that we manipulate them. You see, uh, there is a scripture in the Old Testament. The Lord, Lord, the Lord was saying, and my people like it like that. My people like it like that. My people like it like that. People that will extort you in the name of God. Amen. 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 Number three, you, you misrepresent what you want to do with the money. You collected the money from people to take care of orphans and widows in the church. When the money came, you channeled the money to a building project. It's an error. They are not looking at me again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's an error. When people give for building project, let it go for building project. When people give for caring for widows and orphans, let it go for widows and orphans. Amen. I hope you know what men of God do. They will go to America. They will snap plenty of people and go to America. And they say, all these people are HIV victims. HIV AIDS families. We've been taking care of them in our ministry. And you know, Americans have compassionate heart. They will give when they come. Nothing goes, they were, no, they were not AIDS people in the first place. Amen. May God deliver us from that in Jesus' name. Another thing we see people do this day that is not in the New Testament is selling anointed items. And how many students are in the house? Raise up your hand. Let me see if you're a student. All those places when they put the exam timetable on the board, all those places students go in the name of, come, let us anoint your pen. <laughs> I will not talk too much. It's an error. It's an error. The Bible says, Paul handkerchiefs, we are healing the sick. Hello? Paul handkerchief, they were healing sick. Have you ever heard people, and I was wondering, why will Paul waste his time making tent when his handkerchiefs, his talent, he can pray on handkerchief and sell it? And sell it. How much? One, one million. Your handkerchief are healing sick. You are wasting time making tent. Sell the handkerchief. Make money to keep yourself. Did you find that in the Old Test in the New Testament? Did you find it? You know some some you know oh my people like it like that. My people like it like that. They sell anointing oil. They sell everything. They sell everything in the house of God. It's not like that. Next slide. Amen. Amen. And the last one, they call something donor cultivation. You are making friends with me because you want to ask me for something. I hope you know that men of God do that. Hello. Hello. You make friends with me, not because you really want to be my friend. You want an opportunity. Example. I'm looking well now. Do you know the executive secretary of Ted Fund? Eh? Yeah. Zani Doma man. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Anytime, anything, anytime that that man is in Otupo, do you know how many vice chancellors will go to Otupo to stay with him? Uh, you are not talking again. You don't know. You, you don't know. Me, I will tell you. Anytime that man is traveling, Vice chancellors will come to, to go to lodging hotels and attend the program for which the man has been invited to show their face so that when they see your face, they will give you a big project. That is donor cultivation. Some men of God do it. 
and it's an error. Next slide quickly. I'm rounding up now. Now, if you see this slide, I'm sorry you cannot see it, but they will send it to you. There's one woman that squeezed her face like this. And listen, in so many congregations today, Christians, genuine Christians, have given a party. They are tired. They are tired. In short, you need to hear some people complain how their pastors talk about money all the time. If you have heard that kind of complaint, please, now I see your hand. You have heard that kind of complaint. And listen, some people are leaving churches because of that. Some Christians are tired. You give for this one today. Tomorrow you give for this one. Next tomorrow you give for this one. Next tomorrow. For a whole year, there's always a need to meet. And when you, when you do like that, when they share the grace, and you are going back in your family car, it's murmuring in your heart. Murmuring in your heart. And ladies and gentlemen, will I announce to you, anything you give to God with murmuring in your heart, you have enriched the pastor, but you have not enriched the kingdom of God. Everybody say amen. amen. This one, I'm not asking you whether you agree or you don't agree. Me, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Do, I, do I have like eight minutes more? <laughs> one day, one day, somebody, you know, you know young man, young man say, I go mark him. I go mark him until he give me the money. Somebody marked me well, well. He asked me for money. I brought this complaint. He said, oh, God, I know you can help me. He asked me, I said, oh, God, I know you can help me. So grudgingly, grudgingly, I packaged the money he was asking for and called him to my office and gave it to him. Grudgingly. When the man said, oh, God, thank you, sir. I know you could have done it. That's why I came to you. Thank you, sir. As the man shut the door and was leaving my office, somebody told me, you have wasted your money. Why? You didn't give it with a free mind. God will not reward you for that kind of giving. I didn't hear any amen. amen. Giving with murmuring in your heart. No, it's better for you not to give. Because the next slide we are going to say is, God needs you more than your money. I will come to that very soon. So brothers and sisters, from your free mind, God loves a cheerful giver. You can't give to God that be murmuring. It's better for you not to give at all. And I know that that money I got that man was a waste. I will not get the reward in heaven because I gave with the man worrying me well. well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Next slide. Next slide. So I said... You untwist the people. You do, you do buy and sell it. You use worldly methods. You compare. Listen, I hope you know that in some ministries, if you, if, oh, in our village now, sir, you know, in those days, our village people that, that, that don't want their family and the village elders to worry their children when they die. Do you know what they used to do? They say, now church, go bury me. I know that many of you are not from those kind of villages. But me, I'm from that kind of village. So in order for the, for the community people not to worry your children when you die, you will boldly come out when you are alive and say, now church, go bury me. Once you make that declaration in our village, the elders will not come near your funeral. They will not ask your children to kill anything. So people run to church for burial. Now, the condition of the church is, is becoming more stringent than the condition of the people. So recently, you know, my sister-in-law lost her father-in-law. And then they went to the church. I won't call the name of the church. And then the elders gave them a list. I said the elders of the church gave them a list. And the, the small girl came to me and said, Uncle, is this list, is it not almost equal with what the village people will give? Church of God, 
You take offering at barriers. Offering at barriers. Offering for the man of God, not offering for the children of the diseased. When you want to wed, you make the pastor's coat. It's your responsibility. Oh. As you are doing your coat, you must make the pastor's coat. My people like it like that. My people like it like that. Those kind of pastors are more respected than the type of you that are sitting there. When those kind of pastors step in here, they will rush to collect their Bible. My people like to be extorted. Next slide. I'm rounding up. Next slide, quickly. All right. Everybody say, God is a great provider. God is a great Again. God is a great Again. God is a great How many of you have heard of Hudson Taylor? Hudson Taylor. How many of you have heard of him? What is that is popular saying? God's work done in God's way will never lack God's resources. He was a missionary to China. The man suffered. I watched the man's film before and I wept for the thing I saw this man go through because he will not ask Chinese people to support the work. And anytime his motto is God's work done in God's way will never lack God's resources. Amen. Our God is not a beggar. He can take care of his work. Amen. You don't need to manipulate people. You don't need to promise people heaven and hell. No. God can take care of his work. Each one of you must do as he has proposed in his heart. God loves those kind of people. Make up your mind that this is what I'm going to give for the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And let me tell you something. We used to say in our church, we will not level you, we will not levy you. But if what we are about to do is the will of God, God will do it. And God can do it without your money. When you come and you see that what the brethren was looking for money to do, God has done it. It's a shame on you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So this building will be completed. I didn't hear any amen. And if you want, if you want, you know, may God deliver us from all of that. When the building is completed and you know you didn't do anything, will you be comfortable to go and sit there and be shouting, Amen? That is why make up your mind. I'm not going to um, twist you. I'm not going to tell you that if you don't give, you will go to hell. It's a lie. If you are a child of God, you are walking with the Lord, you will go to heaven. But when you go to heaven, some reward. I hope you know that everybody will not be equal in heaven. Let me see your hands. If you know, if you know, everybody will not be equal. He that soweth sparingly, we do what? Your reward in heaven will be sparingly. That is why some get men of rich men, get man of a rich Christian, will go to heaven and get more reward than the man he was guarding his gate. Because their giving was not equal. Amen. 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 Next slide, quickly. I'm rounding up. So here, I have just two points to make. Number one, and those of you that are writing, write. I will use young men language to say it. If you are not giving to God, you are wounding yourself. Have you written it? You are wounding yourself. Number two, if you are grieving with complaint, you are also wounding yourself. Number three, if you are giving so that they will come up here and they will say, Ah, church, praise the Lord. Brother Edward Omudu gave us two million last month. Give the Lord a clap offering. They will clap. Pa, 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 pa. If they don't do like that, you are hurt. You are wounding yourself. Amen. Jesus said, they love human praise more than the praise of God. Am I speaking the truth? Le encourage me for the last time. The hands have reduced now. Please, if, I, if you know I'm speaking the truth, encourage me for the last time. Hallelujah. So I've not said anything controversial here. Hallelujah. I see my brother in Asu here. Listen, one day we went for Asu meeting. 
And that was, that was, that first flood, that first flood, that one that happened that time, eh? 2012, that flood. We went for Congress that day, and so, Asu, the, Asu said, let every lecturer in the school commit money to give to the victim of the flood. And everybody in Asu said, yes, yes. So we, the local BSU branch, we contributed. They took it to national, national assisted. So we had plenty money to go and assist the victims of the flood. So we entered Asu meeting. This is our mobilization. This is what we got. And we are going to give to the victims on so, so, so date. Then somebody said, Comrade, I want to suggest, since when time we go on strike, the people will say we like money too much. Now that we are going to do good, let us invite the press. <laughs> Let us invite the press so that the press will cover it that us is giving money to flood victim. So the person sitting behind me will tap me at the back. He said, bro, bro, these people have missed the point too. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are given to be noticed. You are missing the point. Jesus has stringent teaching about that. Amen. Next slide, quickly, quickly, quickly. Now, somebody will ask, should the church take loan? Should the church take loan? I know that if I'm chairman of council, I will be tempted to take a loan. Because, sir, the day you approve this building, the money that would have built it that time is not the same money now. And if we leave it in next year, that's how the money will be. I heard that they have reduced the price of cement. But in Makodi, how many people have bought cement? 3,500. You have not. Amen. So I'm rounding up. We'll read, we'll read this scripture. Amen. Second Corinthians 8 and 5. That's the, almost the last scripture. Second to the last we'll read. Second Corinthians, I think it's 8, 5. Please give him the mic. Yes, read. Eight and five. Yes. And this day. And this day. No, your, the mic is not working. All right, don't worry. Sit down. Let me read it from here. Have you written Second Corinthians eight and five? Eight verse five. Are you ready? And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own self to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. And the key word there is, the first gave themselves to who? Lord. To who? Lord. So the next question is, what is the attitude of God to money of unbelievers? Please bring the slide back. Amen. The first gave themselves to who? Before they gave God anything. Let me tell you, maybe you are here. God, does, if you are not a Christian, if you don't believe in Jesus, God does not use your money for anything. In short, what, something scares me that the prayer of a sinner is a what? An abomination. If your prayer is an abomination to God, is it the money of a sinner that God will use? No. That is why Jesus said, if you are bringing an offering to the Lord and on your way coming, you remember that one of your brothers have something against you, come and give the offering, then go back and reconcile. Is that what the Bible says? What did the Bible say? Keep the offering in your pocket. Do what? Go and reconcile, then do what? Then come and give the offering. That is God's attitude. So my brothers and sisters, those of us that love to keep malice in church, you keep malice. Oh, have you seen those videos on Facebook where, where women are dancing to come and give offering? They put all those kind of, uh, there are about four different women. Come and see dancing. 
to come and give offering. Meanwhile, there's a sister in the church that you are not, you are keeping malice. You are wasting your money. God is not interested in that kind of money. Go back and make peace and then take your offering and come and listen. If you are not a Christian, God does not need your money. God will not embarrass himself to ask Christ's unbelievers to come and mock him. And I know that I remember in those days some pastors in Otuko will say, ah, if they don't know God, this is their fault. We will use their money to expand the kingdom of God. It's a lie. Amen. Praise the Lord. God loves your soul more than your money. Everybody say it after me. One, two, go. God loves your soul more than your money. And if you are here this morning and you know that there is something in your life that will disqualify God from hearing your prayers. Because the Bible says the prayer of a sinner is an abomination. There's something in your life that will make God turn deaf ears to your prayer. That same thing in your life will make God not accept your offering. I hope you know that Cain also brought an offering to the Lord. Hello? Cain brought an offering to the Lord. Abel brought an offering to the Lord. Two brothers. Why did God accept Abel and reject Cain? It was their attitude. Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray. And everything I've said here this morning, go and search the scriptures. Everything I've said here this morning, go and search the scriptures. I know that what your man of God might be saying is different from what I have said. I'm not here to compete with anybody. I'm here to share with you what I studied from the New Testament. If you are in church this morning and there is a brother you are not talking to, there is a sister you have not forgiven, can you settle that matter in your heart before you come and give an offering to the Lord so that the Lord will accept your offering? God wants to accept you first before he can begin to accept your offering. If you have not given yourself to the Lord, why are you giving to God? God loves you more than your money. Whatever you are planning to give to God, God gave you first. For God so loved the world that he gave, gave. I advise you, wherever you go, don't waste your money. If you know you are not, you are refusing, there is an issue you want God, you don't want God to deal with in your life. Don't come and give offering. Don't waste your money. Don't give out of memory. Don't give out of compulsion. Don't give and go and criticize the pastor. And as your heads are bowed and we are praying, maybe some of the things I've said this morning, they are strange to you. And you are saying, God, I have given you with a wrong motive. I gave with a wrong motive. I gave so that it can be announced. And since they didn't announce it, I've been very angry. God is here this morning. You see, we need to be together. The brethren were in one accord. And that's how the work of God moved forward. If you are here this morning and you need to say,